Hello, my name is Brother Sean. It's a short video. I hope you'll find it an interesting subject. It may be challenging, but it's really based on an experience I had this morning. I was guided to take some soup to a neighbour of ours, and I'm so glad I called, because when I did, I realised that their need for a hug and a cuddle and just someone to be there to give them some support. It turns out that there are problems in the relationship with their partner and it's mostly a business relationship that's really gone pear-shaped. But what I was sensing was that my dear friend and neighbour was bending over backwards to please everybody and the one person they were hurting the most was themselves. I was taken on a tour of the children's bedrooms and I thought, wow, we didn't have that as children, but there again, we didn't have the internet, did we, and plasma screen TV. Each of the children's rooms was fully equipped with all the latest gadgetry. You name it, they had it. And what my friend was saying, should I love my children? And you could tell and I would, I've done without so that they could have it and then I began to sense alarm bells ringing. Why go without your food so that your children can have all the material things that they need and they want for nothing and that was clearly evident. But when we actually got chatting, their mom was present and I was just saying, Come back to your heart and share with me from your heart. How are you feeling about this prop business proposition with your partner to be or with your partner? And the the gist of it all was they didn't want to hurt their partner, although the partner had really hurt them by not honouring their commitment in the relationship and in the business partnership that caused a lot of unnecessary debt, shame. And this beautiful soul was just at her wit's end. And I said, stop, stop trying to please everybody. I said, if I knew all of that 35 years ago and had the courage to face my great demons, my great insecurities, fears, I wouldn't have got myself into such a mess several years ago, but I did because I was the rescuer. Nurses are rescuers and I was a nurse for 38 years and I'd seen it with colleagues falling in and out of love, feeling sorry for their boyfriend or their boyfriend-to-be and ending up getting married and then within months divorced. To thine own self be true is a saying you're familiar with. But to thine own self be true is important. Put aside emotional feelings and try if you're in that situation where you feel indebted to your partner but there's no love there, is to do the honourable thing. It's like a client that I remember supporting back oh, seven, eight years ago when I was on the road running retreats and this was in Edinburgh and they were in a loveless marriage and her husband, when he'd had a few jars, drinks would actually use her as a, a punch cushion and that's carried on and a few months ago I had a phone call and this particular voice said, do you still remember me, Brother Sean? And I said, well, give us a clue, Edinburgh. I said, oh, is it so? So she said, yes. I said, how are things? And she said, well, much the same, really, since you've seen me all those years ago. I said, well, have you not moved on? She said, I'm scared to move on. I said, why are you scared? She said, well, I'm used to a high standard of living. And, and I couldn't see me doing without all the material things that I've got. Even though your, your husband beats you up on a regular basis, say three, four times a week, and you end up in hospital, is that what this is about? 
that you put material wealth before your health. And you'd be amazed how many professional people who behind their closed doors treat one another appallingly. But coming back to my friend, hardworking, salt of the earth, good soul, generous mother, a kind and a compassionate person who would do anything for anybody, but inside is deeply lonely and unfulfilled. Because I guess deep down, they've never really known a relationship where it was, where the love was reciprocated, where they were respected, valued, cared for. If you're in such a relationship, then I would say to you, come back to your heart, listen to your heart. Your heart will never lie to you. Your heart will never fail you. I give you an example. When I came back from my last stint of running retreats in Egypt in May 2007, I'd obviously contracted a virus a few years prior that was in my body. And by golly gosh, it came to the surface and it left me very ill and paralyzed in my legs. It wasn't Egyptian Tommy or Pharaoh's Revenge as they call it, it was much worse than that. It actually gave me a temporary paralysis where I relied on friends to help me wash and get dressed. But when I look back, it was as if God had a plan. I was a rescuer, but I also lived in fear. I knew in my heart that when I left the monastery in 2000 and no, in 1974, after eight years as a nursing mom, I was so anti-God, anti-church, anti-religion, anti-everything because of the uncharitableness that I found. And many of us left, many young monks left because we couldn't cope with the lack of transparency, the lack of support. But I always had a leaning towards Jesus. And deep down over the years, I've mellowed and matured hopefully. And my relationship with God is not superficial or emotional, it's much deeper. And I've always had a hankering to go back into an enclosed monastery but my spiritual director told me the church isn't ready for you yet and I never understood what she meant but now I know I couldn't cope with it I wouldn't be able to cope with the regimented routine the dogma, the negativity, the lack of charity whereas now it's a different kettle of fish but in 2007 I knew in my heart that I had to surrender to God I knew that I had to come back and live the monastic life. But I was petrified because my head convinced me that I would have to leave my home, my family and friends and go into some austere monastery where I would die a lonely and bitter old man. And then I was made aware that wasn't what Jesus was asking me to do. He said, I never let you go when you left the church. The church let you go. I didn't. I just want you to come back home and live the life you're living now here in your home. Keep it simple. So there's one example of how I convinced myself and made myself miserable. And the only thing that brought me to my senses was the blip, you shouldn't really call paralysis a blip, but that temporary blip, health blip, where I needed help. It allowed me to stop and think rather than run away. Should Lord save us, I'd run away from facing my fear. But now I had to face them. And I was empowered by the love of God to face my heart, to embrace my heart, to listen to my heart. And what it was saying was incompatible to what my head was telling me to do. So I had to make a choice. 
And like this morning when I was trying to befriend and support my, my dear friend and neighbour, it wasn't that I was telling them what to do, because that's wrong. I was trying to empower them to feel safe and loved, that whatever decision they made, I wouldn't renege in our friendship. And that I would be there for them. But I did say quite clearly, you must honour your heart. Stop trying to please everybody, because in the end you destroy yourself. And I just said, are you happy? Definitely not. She said, I'm a happy sort of person, but I miss being with happy people. I said, because you've had the stuffing knocked out of you. You convinced yourself that this was for life. It's not for life. God does not expect two people to stay together who hate one another. He wants them to come to an arrangement. And I could see that she was tearful. And I'm trying to say to her, stop punishing yourself. Start to receive love again. And her mom was listening and saying, I tried telling her that. And we finished up leaving by having a good hug and a good cuddle and I just said to her, you owe it to yourself to love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you'll see the rainbow. But if you keep on denying yourself happiness, you're going to attract people who are going to make you miserable. I said, step into your power. Take back your power. You're a brilliant artist. You're a good person. Put other people aside for now and focus on your needs. What is it that you want? And when she told me, I went, well, now let's manifest that. Because that will give you the incentive to find you and be happy. Let other people worry about themselves. But I could tell that because she's a caring, sensitive soul, she worries about everybody and ignores herself. So hopefully good has come from it. But what I'm saying to you is, if you feel on your journey in life that you're in a situation where you feel totally disregarded, disrespected, unloved, don't you think it's time to come home to your true self? And to thine own self be true. To honor your heart, the gateway to your soul, your higher self, the gateway to God. Let's reflect for a moment. Because it's my old it's my belief also that through your disappointment. It can be God's appointment for your tomorrow. And the thing to do is not to hold things so tightly that you drench the life from it, but hold things lightly. Hold things lightly. Make no demands of anybody. And just ask God for help to get you through the day. And if you are unhappy, name the cause, bless it, release it. Don't go processing it, what's that all about? Because that's one of the tools of the Antichrist, to get you to focus on all the negativity. And then you get lost in the minutiae. And you end up losing yourself. My philosophy is simple, keep it simple. The man who I follow, Jesus, and the rule of life to that of Francis, they were simple. They weren't idiots. They were simple. They lived a simple life in service to God. But there were no fools. And I'm not asking you to be a fool. I'm asking you to have some me time. If Jane Fonda can do that advert for some um, uh, French company that does makeup for women. I don't know if it's Max Factor. And at the end of the interview, at the end of the advert, she says, because I'm worth it. Hello, aren't you worth it? You're a child of God. Take back your power and live 
a lived life. I am. You probably don't think so. I Yes, I'm enclosed. Yes, I'm a contemplative monk. But you know something? I am happier now than I've ever been in my life. Because for the first time since 2007, I am honouring my heart. I don't care what people say about me. My brother in Ireland and family are horrified because they see me as living outside the Catholic Church. I'm not. I'm different. I don't buy into all that fear and guilt and dogma. I keep it simple. So his way of getting at me for bringing shame on the family was to put me on the internet as a scammer as some sort of evil person. But people will do that to you when you find your path. Friends can become quite selfish when you learn to say no. Saying no is important. You should never always say yes to everybody. And children today who are used to parents, who are used to being blackmailed or blackmailing the parents, sorry, will try every pressure in the book to get their own way but one has to stand one's ground and say no because one day they'll ask for a gun and they'll shoot their brains out and that's happening saying no to someone who makes demands on you to do what they want is disempowering you When you say no to them, you're empowering them to take responsibility for their life of selfishness, of greed and control. As a child of God, you are worthy of more than this. You are worthy of more. So take back your power, reclaim your divinity, And don't let fear destroy your life. Fear is an illusion. Name it, bless it, get shut of it. And you're not here in this incarnation to suffer for past lives. Again, that's ego. And many have told me they're here to suffer. Hello, you're not. We're here to be happy. We're here to enjoy all that God has done for us. We are a child of God and God wants his children to be happy. So how can you be happy if you're saying yes, 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 yes? Start saying no and mean no. I hope I've not burdened you. I pray that something of what I've shared will resonate. Namaste and thank you.